Right, well, we'd like to talk about slope, um, and we're going to discuss it um, using various languages. So, again, you, you should have uh, looked at the prelude parts, and it talks about um, math as a language, and, and we're going to look at graphical, um, tabular, or numerical, um, and uh, algebraic uh, language uh, when we talk about a slope. And so we're going to start with graphical. Um, so if you, if you have a Cartesian coordinate system and we think of some line going like this, then the rate of change of that line um, is the slope. And if I want to compare two lines, so I have that line and I have another line that's maybe doing that, those are supposed to be straight, then what I can see visually or graphically, so I'm, I'm looking at this graphically, I can see that, whoops, I don't know what I just did. Oh, I went to page two. We'll get it back. Okay. Um, I, uh, um, so this is steeper, I can see that, than this one. And also, in the sense of reading things left to right, and that's how we read graphs, uh, Cartesian coordinate systems, is we read things left to right. Um, as we go from left to right, we see this is going up in, in, um, in this uh, left-hand side one. And as we go from left to right here on the second one, we see it's going down. And, and so we can, we can look at these two graphs and see, oh, we have um, a difference in steepness, but also a difference in uh, an up or down direction. Uh, again, that's relative. It has to be relative to um, going from either left to right or right to left or up and down or something like that. Um, we choose in mathematics to read these from left to right just like we read English. And, and so we see the left one here going up and we see the right one going down. And those rates of change, in other words, the steepness, um, which is uh, another way of thinking about rate of change. Uh, oops, I forgot my Y there. Um, the rate of change of the Y value within the um, Cartesian coordinate system, uh, the rate of change of the Y value with respect to the X value is the steepness. So when we talk about that rate of change of y with respect to x, we are simply asking for, say, a one unit, if that is one unit, uh, one unit move uh, left to right from one point uh, here, how much, so x moved one, the question is how much did the y move, sorry about that, I added another page, um, fat hand, I guess. Uh, so um, we have, uh, you know, that one unit to the right, how much did the Y go up or down? And whatever that is, uh, typically um, we give that value uh, the letter M and and that is our slope. Okay, so M is, is our slope. And, um, and so the way we would tend to um, see this graphically, uh, let's see, kind of come down here. I didn't mean to make that line there, but um, so the way we would tend to see this graphically is um, suppose I have a, a nice grid here. So I'll make a grid, and there I have a point. Now, graphically, really, if, if I have a good grid, I don't really need to know the actual coordinates. I just need to know their relative spots. And, and so here's another point along a line or a line segment. So I'll attach them with a line. 
And the question is, well, what's the slope of that line? And um, the way I can get it, now the easiest way graphically is um, to just count how far I went over in X and, and how much I went up in Y or down in Y. Um, now, you know, we mentioned that slope is really just the one unit change. So if each of these uh, grid pieces was one unit, um, well, I guess for one unit over this way, I went up that much, but I'm not sure how much that is, you know, so it's kind of hard to, uh, to get at. But what I can do is um, uh, look here and I could count and, and do a division. Uh, to normalize it, as we would say. So notice that, uh, and I can I can either go all the way over to here because I have those two points. So that, assuming that these grid uh, pieces are the same size in both directions, well, there's four grid pieces that way, and going this way is two grid pieces. So I went up two four four to the right. And, um, and so, uh, what is that if I only went one unit to the right? Well, that's just the division of the up two over the four that normalizes it or, or gets me uh, a per unit um, uh, number. Another way you could think of this is what I'm going to do is, well, I went up, I went over four, uh, I should have only gone over one, so let's divide both of these numbers by four. Okay, so I, I'll divide two by four, and, well, that's what you see there, and I'll divide four by four. But when I divide four by four, I get one, and, and that's what I need to do, you know, I need to have is, is one unit in X. And so my slope is 2 over 4, and I can reduce that. Uh, actually, in, in a lot of the stuff in this class, we won't have to reduce it. Um, but there's one half. Now, I could get that another way, though, too, is um, this looks like it kind of goes through that point there. And so I could have just counted over my 2 here and up one grid unit there. And my slope, then I would have taken the up one divided by two, and I would have gotten that same one half uh, that way. So there's graphical uh, representation of the slope. Now to move a little bit more toward, um, oops, I forget I can't do it that way. Um, uh, okay, if, if I want to move just a little bit more uh, toward the tabular idea, many of you, well, I, I think all, every one of you, have been given this definition of slope where, um, let's kind of come back here at these two points and, and suppose this was the point x1, um, y1, and up here was the point x2, y2. You've been given the, the formula um, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now if you if you look at what that is, that formula, all it, that formula is doing is what we did right here. Is, okay, you know, if I could actually tell you what x2 was, eh, let's pick a number. Let's suppose x2 was a 6 and x1 was a 2. Partly I picked that so that that 4 would be at the right place. But um, So um, how would I know that I went over uh, 4 units to get from this point to this point? Well, I could count if I could see the graph, but if I can't see the graph, if it's more tabular, well, I would have the numbers, you know, I'd have a point that was called the point um, 2, and we'll have to get back to the y value, and another point called 6, and we'll have to get back to the y value, but how would I find how far it is from 2 to 6? Oh, I just take 6 minus 2, 
and that's what that says. You know, so I could count, or I could, if I know the actual numbers, I could take a, a subtraction. Well, if I'm truly doing it visually, and I can see the the units and the cross hatches and and all that within the the uh, Cartesian coordinate system, I really don't need to know specifically what those numbers are. I truly can just count. But if I have a table of values, a table of points or something like that, well then I can't see that, I can't count, and therefore um, I really do need to use subtraction to, to find that distance. And another reason I might want to use subtraction is, well, suppose um, these points are really, really far apart you know, like 10 million units apart. Well, I don't want to count to 10 million. I can, but I don't want to. And, and so that's all that formula down there is doing. Because if we take 6 minus 2, we get 4. Well, that's what I divided by right there. I divided by 4. Why? Well, because 6 minus 2 is 4. But I didn't do it as a subtraction. I just counted. And then similarly, you know, suppose we had something like you know, here is one, there's two, there's three, then our y values, this one down here is a one, this one here is a three, and when I do that subtraction, you know, so uh, really what I'm doing is I'm just counting how many squares is it, uh, or lengths, uh, from here up to that point, or from this point up to there. You know, I'm, I'm just getting that difference in height. and Oh, difference in height. Mm, language is amazing that way. So you see, I'm just taking the 3 minus 1, and that's where I got the 2. So I have 3 minus 1 is 2, right there. And then um, 6 minus 2 is 4. That's where I did the... 6 minus uh, 2 and got 4, and that's right there. And, and so the graphical method of counting is really the same thing as the tabular method of taking uh, differences, um, but they're just, uh, you know, they're different languages, and, and they're useful in different ways. And, and so if it's easy for me to do the counting, um, I do that. Uh, you know, I'll just count and look at a slope to get it that way. And then, you know, if things are going down, so suppose I have something like this, and I started up here and it went down to there. Well, there's my line segment, and again, I count. Uh, in the direction of, you know, left to right, and when I count there, oh, I got two. And here, when I count here, notice I'm going down as I move to the right, and I went down one, two, three, and so there's three, but I went down, so it's a negative three, so my slope in this case is negative three halves. And, and so there is my graphical uh, method, and um, you you can use the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, we'll get to that again in a minute, uh, but that is uh, probably enough for this video, and so we'll we'll call that good. Uh, I got to figure out how to stop the video here. Let's see. There we go. Stop.